Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Film Cave. What's up, uh, movie lovers? Uh, movie lovers everywhere. This is the Film Cave. We talk about movies and everything movies. That's <laughs> <What>? Casey. <laughs> That's Casey. I'm Steve. Uh, here we go. Here we go. So, first up this week, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, the next big uh, live action movie that Disney's coming out with is Mulan. Which I'm excited about. Yeah. Came out back in '98, and, and the cartoon, uh, yeah. right, the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is like a, a good one for them to do because it's kind of more, it's a little bit bigger. Like there's lots of armies. There's this um, conflict with uh, women working or women you know, going to war when they're not supposed to. They're supposed to be at home and that kind of stuff. And she kind of disguises herself. And there's lots of good songs and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, It'll be a lot, you know, a lot more epic. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. it's a little. Bit more epic than like the Cinderella or Maleficent right. and that kind of stuff. I don't know. Right. In the scale yeah. of things. Beauty and the Beast would be would be pretty epic That's too. True. But, but I yeah, think I'm excited they're for They're just that. gonna remake all these live action versions. I think it's of, a great uh, idea. Of the like animated stuff. Right. It's kind of a new yeah. generation for of people to watch yeah. and they like. It's kind of cool. And then so they have the um, producers from We Are the Millers are set to produce it. Hmm. And then the, these two new writers, I tried to find any information I could about these female writers mm -hmm. I could. The names are uh, Lauren Heineck and Elizabeth Martin. Uh, Congratulations two, ladies. Right, two new writers I guess, maybe they've written some other things. But Probably just went out. in there and gave a, a hell of a yeah. synopsis or something, they must have a great vision. So. Right. So I was excited. writing that, and yeah, I was excited about yeah. this. So it should be good. I mean, especially with female writers, with mm -hmm. kind of like a female lead, I think yeah. it will be good. Do you think Eddie Murphy will be back as Mushu? I think he should <laughs> be back as Mushu. Like once again, though, like with these types of non-human characters, mm -hmm. do they do? How do they? How do they do that? How do they create like Mushu? How do they create the the you know the furniture in? Beating the Beast, like how right. are they going to do that? That's what yeah. I want to know more than anything else. But like with Mushu, it could be it could Andy be Circus in motion. That's what I mean. So I would be I would be happier yeah. with like a CG motion cap kind yeah. of kind of you know animated kind of thing that goes along with it that looks real but it's not real. Right. Not perfect. Yeah, sure. That's not yeah, yeah. dresser. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. It'll be exciting to, exactly. to see what Disney decides to do. So, so yes, very that's, cool. That's good news. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, and nice. then um, some other news. Uh, I posted this on our uh, Facebook page mm -hmm. that uh, Steven Spielberg is going to direct Ready Player One, which I'm so excited about. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah. like for to have him. I mean, I feel like he's kind of like he's done a bunch of. of Geeky movies, you know, Jurassic Park and Indiana oh, yeah. Jones and, and that kind of War stuff. War of the Worlds. And, worlds. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he he would he could he's the one writer who could bring this kind of thing to life. And I assume that uh, Ernest Klein, who was the writer of the book, is going to have a lot to do with the writing of the movie. I would assume, or I would hope that he would have some to yeah. do with it. Right. You know, to bring some kind of that kind of inspiration to it. But like to have this big, you know, A-list director come onto this kind of book that I loved reading. Yeah, I got to check. I got to check that out. I know you and. And Chris have really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, that's so, the yeah, next I'm on excited. my list. I'm excited to, to see where they go with this and to see some cool. Kind of yeah, I mean, it's art. just exciting when Spielberg gets back to doing sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I it's mean, they, be he's definitely, awesome. definitely it's has a, a fantasy, a love sci-fi, '80s for that. So I'm excited for that. Very cool. The big new, I mean, the big news: the Furious Seven hitting theaters this week, and. I mean, Steve has <laughs> I have trivia galore. Love. Okay, so this. Okay, galore. so the first. Okay, so to start it all out. Yeah. I have a deep love for this movie. It came out when I was in high That's school. That's an understatement. Understatement. <laughs> I came out when I was in high school in 2001. Um, it was, you know, kind of like a. Um, it was based off of a an article in a I think in a, in New York, based on this uh, street racer called um, Racer X. And he actually has credit in the screenplay for the first movie, oh, cool. for this article that was written. Um, and he he they expanded it out. It was directed by Rob Cohen, and Cohen. Um, who's he's kind of you know he's kind of like a action the kind of PG thirteen yeah. movie. Went on director. the triple X, the first one with Vin Diesel. Right. So so it came out two thousand one, and I I don't know I fell in love with it. it felt maybe it made me fall in love with cars. Yeah. Made me fall in love with the whole street racing scene. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know. I, I saw it ten times. <laughs> <laughs> Just theaters. slightly liked it. Ten times in theaters. Like uh, I was obsessed with this. It's movie. like your version of Titanic. Okay, 
that's not, that's not. No, I'm just saying, like, like but yeah, you know, like I you saw, used to see Titanic exactly. ten times in theaters, like you did with Fast and Furious. I, I loved it. And so, uh, so some trivia with that. Um, I found out that Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale, and Eminem were all considered for the role of Brian O'Connor. <laughs> Eminem. Right. So like, Sweet. Um, you know, Eminem. I think that was when. That was back when uh, his Eight Mile came out, so he was mm -hmm. kind of big on the scene with that. Yeah. And that would be interesting to see. I'm not sure if, if it would have been the same character if he would have continued on with it. Right. And then, like with a, a Christian Bale, like that would be that would be totally weird. I'm sure these are all just kind of like yeah. names that they just spattered off. And For sure. Um, I don't know. They, if they, they, they got yeah, any of them. Yeah, they do this with every movie. Right. So that you was. Know, but now you can't imagine it without Paul Walker and the character. So can't like, imagine yeah, it. But it just so everything then, works out for a reason. Right. So then, um, movie gets over with. Um, they're talking about a second one. Uh, um, Paul Walker, in his contract, has an option to do a second one. So if they do make a second one, he has to do a second one, which is what happened with Vin Diesel. He wanted to make thirty million dollars a movie. Wow, not possible. So he passed on time. it. He, right. <laughs> at that time, yeah. he passed on it. Um, he actually took the director Rob Cohen and did Triple X. Triple X, right? So they went off, did that movie. Too Fast, Too Furious came out in 2003, a couple years later, yep. um, directed by John Singleton. Yes. Um, and it had that kind of vibe, that kind of urban um, um, vibe to it. But he brought a whole other view to like this street racing kind of uh, Miami. Yeah. Thing, uh, flair to it, right? Right. And I, I love that one too because it kind of showed a little bit of background between him and Tyrese. Yeah. Um, Childhood friends. With, with Roman, Roman Pierce. Pierce, right? Yeah. And so that was cool. I like that. And and I guess he the director did a lot of wanted a lot of like uh, improv, improvs, mm. you know, kind of let them kind of feel it out and do that kind of stuff. And uh, and along with. The only tidbit I could get about this one, because it was, kind of came and went, mm -hmm. was Ja Rule was offered the part of, of um, a, kind of a secondary role in the movie. Not, but oh, he wanted Fast and right, oh. Fast and Furious. He wanted the role of Roman Pierce. But that's interesting, because right. Ja Rule was in the he was first, the first Fast one as yeah. just, like, but he wanted to kind of develop that character as the Roman Pierce character. Mm -hmm. They said, not a chance, because yeah, no. you're not that kind of actor, right. and so he passed on the role. That was what I did that I could get up yeah. Um but yeah, so he, he wanted a bigger role, didn't so that's, he, I, think, he, so he, I think he Singleton to, worked with Tyrese before. Baby, I think Baby Way was in the movie yeah, with him. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, yeah, that was what to make it good. But yeah, okay. I liked that movie a lot. It was it was kind of a different flair and uh, um, kind of took it to a different level. Which yeah. was good because it wouldn't appear to end up. So Paul Walker good. has the option to do a second one with or without Vin Diesel. Right. Options for the second one. So what happens right. with between two and then Tokyo Drift? Right. So Tokyo Drift came along, and in two thousand six, so mm -hmm. it took a while. Yeah. Like three yeah, years. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was like a couple Finally of came years. out again with a new director now. So that's the third director. Third the series, director. Justin Lin, mm -hmm. who's obviously the director of the ones. Right. Four, or five, five six. Up. So in Tokyo Drift. Um, they said that they wanted, they were obviously considering Paul Walker, but they said at the time he was too old. Oh. So he's actually, okay. he was actually, um, I think he was, he had just turned 40 when, before he died. So he's actually oh, okay. a lot older than you would think. Yeah. So in the movies, I think he was like 30 years old. Wow. So in this movie, they wanted a younger actor and they didn't want Paul. So they kind of thought about like rebooting the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Tokyo Drift takes place in a totally different country. Right. But it adds a whole other flair to it with um, not just street racing, with drifting. Right. You know, around these parking garages and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, they said that they wanted, um, they, they said Vin, or Paul was too old, but they wanted to reprise Vin's character in this movie. Okay. But he he didn't want, he didn't he wasn't down with it, didn't really want to. Mm -hmm. But at the very end of the movie, he does a cameo in it. Right. And they, they, he made a deal with the production company, saying that if you give me the rights to Riddick, I will make, do a cameo in this movie. So, did the third one, Justin Lin, now the fourth one comes out. Now the fourth, fourth one comes out in 2009, so it's another three years. Okay. So, you think that's the third one, I'm thinking it's over, it's done, and I'm pretty sad about that. Yeah. But then, they talk about the fourth one. But wait, there's more. With Justin Lin again, and with Paul Walker and Diesel, all these people come yeah. back. All so everybody comes yeah. back for it. Everybody comes so back. Excited. Jordana Brewster mm -hmm. and uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. yeah, all kind of back. back. So, uh, in this one, actually, this one actually broke a record for Universal. Jurassic Park Lost World was actually um, in first place for Universal, making the most. 72.1 million. This made 72.5 million. Opening weekend? Opening weekend. Okay. 
So this is a big. This is like oh. this kind of like send off yeah. for them, yeah. for the whole franchise, uh, and with Justin Lin. Yeah. So in this one, did more than that, and I also found out that David Ayer actually has an uncredited writer. Oh really? Credit. So we actually had something to do with the the, the rewriting. Took a pass on the, yeah, the screenplay. Oh, interesting. And and obviously on the first one too. You guys write credit on the first one too. I did not Took know that. Took a pass that. on that, which is pretty interesting. That's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that does well. People love it. Yep. So then, yep. uh, a couple Climbing years later, for more. Mm -hmm. a couple years later, yep. and they do Fast Five. Fast Five. So uh, the character of Hobbs, played by The Rock, by The Rock, was actually uh, supposed to, or was kind of written, or was they were kind of leaned towards actually Tommy Lee Jones. Oh. Right. So, though I think the, what they were kind of getting at is that if you watch Hobbs' character in the fifth one, he kind of has that fugitive type right. character where yeah. he's like, we need to find him. We have ten, you know. He's kind of have that attitude. Yeah. He's a little bit more a different kind of actor. A little oh, yeah. bit more of a um, I'm gonna kick your ass kind of vibe, rather than like for the Rock. <laughs> right for the Rock. Tommy Lee Jones I mean, Tommy Lee Jones like probably kick my ass. But. Right. He's kind of like the veteran of the first, but you know, has has still something to do with that. You know, where yeah. he was considered for the role, but um, okay. I think it has something to do with that. Yeah. I could, okay, I could see that, like the feeling of writing a script and be like, this is like a Tommy Lee Jones character yeah, type of thing. But, but. like, it's, like they, they had the rock to it. Yeah. He's in the next, yeah. you know, yeah. the next three of them. Yeah. Another one, so another one directed by Justin Lin, obviously. And then now the sixth one comes out a couple of years later. So now it's like, it's now just, just keeps it up. Right. Yep. So now this, so now the sixth one was, is going to be the last one by the way. Right. Um, he, he actually wanted to do five and six back to back. Supposed to be Fast Five, Furious Six, back to back. Okay. Supposed to come out like beginning of the year, end of the year. Okay. Like, same year, plus released. Interesting. Um, ended up not happening um, for various reasons. Um, so that's why in the sixth one they have the plane, which is supposed to be the end of Furious Six, and then they have the tank, which is supposed to be the end of Fast Five. That was the whole idea. Oh. Didn't happen. Crammed it all Crammed into it all. one. Okay. That's why there's okay. two huge set pieces in this movie. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh yeah, and I also found out some other weird fact that this is the first movie where Letty, Michelle Rodriguez, and um, Brian uh, Paul Walker actually talk to each other, <laughs> have an interaction. Have actually lines of dialogue to each to other. To each other. They've never talked to each other. They've been in scenes, <laughs> right. they've talked, never talked to each other. It's only one line. That's at the very end of the movie. Interesting. Right? Yeah. Isn't that weird? In all these movies that they've been in together, they've never actually interacted together. <laughs> So, so, um, so yeah, yeah. Six one comes out. Obviously, they already have plans to make a seventh one. Right. But um, Justin Lin doesn't want to be doesn't want to do it. Moving on to other things. Fine. Okay. They hire James Wan to direct this uh, Fury Seven, okay. which he just comes off The Conjuring, which was a really scary movie. So I was kind of skeptical, but you know he did a really good job in The Conjuring, so I was excited yeah. about that. Um, so he he signs off of that. He um, they start. They start filming it, and tragically, so tragically, in the middle of filming, uh, yeah. Paul Walker dies. He's doing this charity event. He ends up wrecking him and his, his racing partner end up dying in, in the car. Because that was originally due last summer. Right. right. It's supposed to come out in 2014. Yeah. Um, and they had just wrapped for the holiday, for Thanksgiving. Right. So you know it was over things. It was like the Thanksgiving weekend. Um, when he died, mm -hmm. I, like when I, I heard about it, and I thought there's no way, like right. that's impossible. And yeah. it, I, oh my god, I was crying. It was so sad to hear him. He's still crying. To hear him, I'm crying on the yeah, inside. On the inside. Because he was like this, like this movie set it off for me. And him as that character, like that was the character that I saw myself. Yeah. And, yeah. And so like for him to die it was like it was yeah. heartbreaking for no. me. Right. And like it was just was untrue. And like, it's, and then with all of these like. Um, his friends and all these people like posting all this stuff and like he just turned out to be like you find out he's like the most amazing person yeah. away from yeah. movies like you know he has these charity events that he does and these um, you know with all this stuff like he's an amazing person as a person yeah. and then with these different directors so he did all these other movies in, in between um, I think one of one of the ones that needs to be watched is Running Scared um, Running Scared it's it was I guess it was like one of his top like acting wise yeah is his best acted in movie and if you don't if you watch it you'll know why he needed to be he was in demand you know obviously these movies were what he was doing he was in the franchise but as an actor like there was a there was a couple of directors who came out and said he was he was ramping up to be easily the best actor nominee 
you know, Oscar winning, yeah. Oscar nominated. A lot more depth to him than Right. More than these fast series. Yeah. But he was, you know, he was doing that. So that's a movie you need to check out. His running scare. Really, really good. Really good, well acted. He does a good job. So now, what do they do? Do they finish the movie? Do they not finish the movie? Mm -hmm. um, they they all come together and they say, well, there's no way we can finish this without him. But then they all come together and say, how could we not finish it? Right. So because the film went on hiatus for a while, um, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson was filming Hercules. Hercules ended filming. He now he's actually being he's actually available to be in this in this in the sixth seventh one. Ah. So the only reason okay. he's in the seventh one is because they rap for so long. Right. Which they is had to postpone. Yeah. Right? So because they postponed for so long, he was able to come back and reprise his role as Hops, which cool. is cool. Yeah. Right. So. Great. Another, uh, so they have, um, have some new actors, Kurt Russell. Yep. Uh, they have... Kurt Russell, Jason Statham. Statham. Uh, Austin's the, the, the bad villain. Guy, right, the villain. Mm -hmm. uh, Statham was actually up for the role, uh, uh, as with, that Luke Evans had in the sixth one. Oh, okay. They got turned away, but he actually yeah, came into this one. Now they play brother. brothers, right, right. And then another role, Kurt Russell. Yeah. They actually, they offered the role to Denzel Washington. They turned it down. Wow. Yeah. It's just like secondary role. I'm psyched to see Kurt Russell. Right. So it's a role that they're saying that I love he... Love Denzel, but... Oh, yeah. yeah it would have been interesting sweet. to see that kind of... And then, out. um... Uh... Rousey? What's her name? Ronda. Ronda Rousey. I love um, her. Yeah, she's... So she's awesome. Mm -hmm. She's gonna have a kick-ass fight in that. And... And, and then, um... Tony Ja. Tony Jaa. Ja. Uh, this is his first, like... In, in, um, this is his yeah. first, um... Like English he speaks language. English in this movie for the first time in any other yeah. Of movies. Yeah, for sure. Check out like the Ong, Ong Back movies. He does some like mind blowing martial arts. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, like, and then. <clears throat> the cast is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Oh, and then isn't um, isn't Lucas Black from Tokyo yes. Drift? Okay, so. <laughs> so, what I didn't know about that until after I did more research. That makes me so happy. Yeah. That he's coming like back. It's all right. It's like all this whole family. Oh my god. It's that like makes Tokyo me so Drift happy. felt so like separate right. from everything, and now it's all being to bring him back. Like I'm excited to see his role in this because he's he's a cool actor, and I like yeah. him. I liked him in that movie. That that kind of like started a whole other thing for me to like him as an actor. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, it's two and a half hours long of awesomeness. The longest movie in the series. series. The longest movie of the series. Mm -hmm. So so I'm excited yeah. to see him in it. So that should be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the Kurt Russell role, I guess, there, it was the plan is to have him be a small role in this movie and actually develop him into a bigger role in the next movie. Ah, Hopefully, we'll see. Which Vin Diesel has said wants to set in New York. Right, so for a new one. they wrapped on that, so it was supposed to come out last year, now it's coming out this year, it's coming out this week. I, I took a day off of work to go see this movie. Yeah, That's yeah. how important it was to me. <laughs> so so now... I did as well, so I can hold his hand. Through exactly, the he will be holding my hand. That's right. So now, uh, to talk about... Where, where it goes. How do you go? How do you move on with Paul, Paul Walker? Do you develop it? Right. You know, everybody says... Oh, and then his brothers. His, right. Like, his so, twin younger brothers, like, stepped in and helped finish right. him shooting as well. So, they only did... He did maybe, I think it was like 67% of, of his part in the movie. So, what they did was they combined um, CGI, mm -hmm. um, some of his... Two of his brothers, his older and his younger brother, to come in as... And to to act in, you know, parts to finish it. So his brothers came on to the film set and helped them finish this movie. Like, and everybody that's talked about this movie so far, that's been in the movie side deck, it is the most epic tribute to Paul Walker. Yeah. To, to do this movie. Like, it, it, it sends him off amazingly. So I'm excited just to see where it takes him as a character. Right. After he's passed yeah. away. Like, I'm excited for this. This should be amazing. Let him walk off into the sunset. Right. So, um, so they, so they, he, he was able to finish the movie with CGI and the help of his brothers, which is amazing mm -hmm. for them to do. Yeah. And so now, where does it go on from there? So, um, the only thing I could come up with was Vin Diesel's already talked about them moving to, to New York. Right. So maybe, new cast, maybe Vin starts a whole nother episode of, of, of movies. Um, you know, I think Dwayne's done, definitely. Um, with this character because he's so busy now. He has yeah, a Disney yeah, movie coming up. He has two other. He has uh, tons of movies coming up. Right. Vin also is kind of busy, but I think he wants to. If he could do it, he's going to do it. He'll oh, yeah. find time to do it. Yeah. Um, the rest of the actors are kind of open. I don't think they have much going yeah, on right now. Yeah. I'm sure they'll bring back. So who? they'll they'll want to come back if they want to come back. Right. Um. So, but then the director, so Justin Lin, he's pretty busy now. That he's done all these yeah. movies. Yeah. I'm not sure. Justin Lin's doing the new Star Trek. New Star, Star Trek, Trek three. He was, I think, he, he was signed on to do the new uh, 
um, Born Identity with Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Renner. Renner. I think something happened, it got pushed back, so then he got on to Star Trek 3. And so it's possible he could be available to direct again. Obviously, that's somebody who they would want to continue the relationship with. Sure. Um, James Wan, you know, if, if this ends up being the big box office, which it will, oh, yeah. he has uh, Conjuring 2 coming out um, next year. Um, you know, so it was, I don't know. So maybe I, after Conjuring 2, right? They, they so fit his schedule. So my possibly. my thoughts are, they'll they probably won't announce anything maybe until next year to make a movie. Like we're yeah. gonna make Fury say it's gonna start filming at the end of the year. So this is all I'm gonna have for like a year of news. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I'm excited. I mean, well, I mean, look how you know early they're picking from. you know release dates and mm -hmm. and releasing. And I, Certain information. And they had so. a release date for Fury Seven before even Fast and Furious, or before Furious Six came out. Yeah, that's how exciting right. about it. Yeah, they had a plan for like now. Last this kind of like hit. It's kind of like where do we go from here? But yeah. you know, I think I think they'll continue it. It's just too. It's too. Obviously, it's got kind of, you know for the production company. It's easy for them to just say let's make more money and make another one. And people will see it for sure. Yeah, you know, it just needs come. It needs Vin at least. Oh, for, for sure. For it. sure. Yeah. So they'll be. Several familiar faces, I'm sure. That's the Fury's history. Wow. Never heard him talk this much in his life. <laughs> <laughs> you must really like this movie. That's right. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm psyched to see that with you. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. That's the, the main, the main the movie, movie in the theater. So, and then just uh, out on, out on Blu-ray this week mm -hmm. before we run out of space <laughs> and time. Uh, we got Interstellar, Christopher Nolan's amazing... That's a uh, buy. Yeah, I, I think that's a buy as well. For sure, um, on Blu -ray it definitely. I mean, definitely takes some repeated viewing. So oh, yeah. you know, we'll take watch it times. again. I, it, it, I know it, it. Some people didn't really uh, care for it. But it's, it's said worth it, it was like M Night Shyamalan like signs. Don't, don't even listen to all that yeah. crap. You need to buy it. Uh, watch it. And then uh, the Imitation Game, which uh, which was a, a pretty you know, big award player in mm -hmm. the the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Um, it didn't win anything, but uh, but it's um, it Benedict Cumberbatch is, yeah. is incredible. Karen really good, Knightley. really good performance in Karen Knightley. Both not um, Both, yeah, um, from a, a Norwegian director <laughs> named Morten Tildum, who did a really cool movie called Headhunters, which is on Netflix. That you should definitely check, check out. it out. Definitely check it out. It's really so that's fun. A rent. Um, so yeah, the Imitation I Game, rent. rent or Buy, yeah. Headhunters. Watch, rent. <laughs> Watch it on Netflix, mm -hmm. and then uh, last but not least, Wild, with uh, Reese Witherspoon. Who I heard she's phenomenal mm -hmm. in it, um, so that's a, but I haven't, I haven't had a chance to a see this buy. one. But um, yeah, just definitely a rent. Yeah, rent that one. Rent it. If um, you like it, buy it. Yeah, yeah. she's awesome. Well, in it. Exactly. Yeah, so I hear she's it. she's awesome, and it's a lot different and darker for her. She goes to some dark places. Yeah, mm -hmm. some very dark places. And on that note, we'll cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good week at the movies, everybody. Mm -hmm. We'll be back next time. Seven, yeah. As we will. At least yep. twice. Not five oh, times. At least Maybe five times. Maybe seven times for it's, this, for this it's Definitely seven. possible. I will sneak off and go see this movie by myself if I have to. <laughs>